America, we've been told for the last year, is besieged by shadowy foreign actors seeking to undermine American interests. Now, the people making that claim, you may have noticed, are doing it for partisan reasons, but that doesn't mean they're entirely wrong. In fact, it turns out they might be more right than they know. And the real problem has very little to do with the last presidential election. Washington is indeed awash in foreign money. Other countries pay lobbyists to do their bidding here. We got a window into how all of this works in Monday's indictment of Paul Manafort. Now, according to federal investigators, Manafort took money from pro-Russia political figures in Ukraine and funneled that cash through lobbyists in D.C. One of the lobbying firms Manafort hired is called the Podesta Group. Its founders, Tony and John Podesta, are probably the single best connected Democrats in Washington, in part because they're among Bill and Hillary Clinton's oldest and closest friends. What exactly did the Podesta Group do with all the money they got from Paul Manafort, who got it from the Ukrainians? Well, according to the federal indictment, Tony Podesta, quote, lobbied multiple members of Congress and their staffs about Ukraine sanctions, the validity of Ukraine elections, and the propriety of Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych imprisoning his presidential rival, end quote. Now, did you catch the key phrase in there? It was members of Congress. The Ukrainians were not paying to influence a presidential campaign. They were paying to sway the Congress, the body that makes this country's laws. According to a confidential source we talked to, the Podesta Group consistently arranged meetings between American lawmakers and pro-Russian agents. Our source says Podesta set up several meetings between pro-Russian Ukrainians and then Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chairman Bob Menendez of New Jersey. Probably not too surprising, Menendez, you'll recall, is currently on trial for bribery. We reached out to his office this afternoon for comment and got this from Tricia Enright, his communications director, quote, when Tucker Carlson acts like a real journalist and not a puppet for the alt-right conspiracy theorists, we will be happy to work with him. Menendez probably has nothing to lose at this point. But all of it does raise an interesting question. Which other lawmakers in Washington were meeting with and perhaps doing the bidding of agents of a rival hostile government? Well, the frustrating, indeed the infuriating answer is, we don't know. Lobbyists are required by law to disclose which foreign governments they're working for. Members of Congress have exempted themselves from that disclosure requirement. They can meet with all the foreign agents they want. They can change U.S. law and policy based on those meetings, and they never have to reveal any of it to the public. And that's exactly what they do. It happens every single day here, and it's all in secret. Other governments influence American policy all the time in big ways and small, and you don't have the right to know about any of it. Looking for a foreign influence scandal? We've got one for you, and it's extensive. Take the Podesta Group. According to federal documents, the Podesta Group didn't just work for the Ukrainians. They also lobbied on behalf of interests in Azerbaijan, Iraq, South Sudan, Myanmar, Somalia, Kosovo, Thailand, India, Moldova, the communist government of Vietnam, among others. According to our sources from inside the company, they were also unofficially lobbying for the Sultan of Brunei, an Islamic autocrat accused of numerous human rights abuses. In each case, presumably, the Podesta Group made the case for those countries in front of American members of Congress and their staffs. Which members did they talk to? What did they get in return? We don't know. Because as we said, Congress won't tell us. They don't have to. They make the laws. We do know the scale of foreign lobbying in Washington is breathtaking. In 2013, that's the last year for which we have numbers, the top 10 highest spending countries spent about 70 million lobbying DC. And that's just the spending that was actually made public. Around the world, foreign interests know the fastest way to get things done in Washington is to pay for it. And boy, do they pay for it. Just counting Russia and other post-Soviet states, at least 440 clients have high representation here in Washington lobbyists. Of course, that figure does not include entities that fail to register, and some of the most powerful ones don't and never have registered, nor do these numbers include the de facto lobbying that takes place via informal networks. That might be the most common, it's certainly the most insidious kind of lobbying there is. For example, between 1999 and 2014, the Clinton Foundation received more than $10 million from Ukrainian sources. Is there anyone who's going to claim with a straight face there was no political intent behind that money? The Ukrainians are suddenly committed to fighting cholera and childhood obesity? Spare us. There's a lot more to the story, more than we realize, but here is the bottom line. Hostile nations are, in fact, attacking our democracy. They're doing it with the help of our own Congress. It is time for members of Congress to come clean and tell us exactly what's going on.
Congressman David Cicilline is a Democrat representing the state of Rhode Island, and he joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks for coming on. My pleasure. Good to see so you. you're on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Yes. Um, and we wanted to know what foreign lobbyist interests you had met with. So we called over to your office, and this is the response that we got. I'm quoting. I'm sure he's met with folks who registered under FARA, as well as ambassadors, government officials, and heads of state, but they had no details. Why shouldn't citizens be able to know who a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee is meeting with from a foreign country? Yeah, no, I, I think it's a great question. I mean, we have a number of meetings as a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Sometimes it's heads of state, sometimes it's an ambassador, or obviously are lobbying for the country, but those are government officials. There are occasions in which people who are hired as lobbyists advocate for a particular country. They have to disclose that. Uh, they, you know, someone wouldn't get an appointment if they just said, I want to talk to you about you know, Uzbekistan or Pakistan right. without. So they have to disclose that, and they're required, of course, under law to register, to disclose what they're paid, et cetera, under FARA. So um, I think that's really important. But, uh, but I guess I would make two points. One, many of them don't register, as you know. Well, they know. should. And Some... anyone who, and if they don't, I mean, there's a, I actually have a piece of legislation. It's a bipartisan bill with Matt Gates to actually strengthen the Foreign uh, Registration Act to allow for, you know, more tools to do investigations. So I think we have to make sure that law is strong. People should comply with it. It provides important information so people know who lobbyists are working for, how much they're getting paid, et cetera. And I think that's important. Uh, yeah, I mean, the obvious question is why is it taking this long? And there are huge lobbies who don't register at all under fair as you know, and it's pretty outrageous in my view. I agree. But, but the real question <laughs> the is... the law and everyone should follow it. Why does... But everyone knows that it's not followed here, and everyone's always no, done I, that. I, it's true, and you know it's I mean, I, would, I wouldn't... I but, but why doesn't Congress... Why isn't Congress... Tucker, look, you subject to no, the look, same disclosure. We, we should, I don't what understand I, What I'm that. saying is I think we should absolutely insist that people comply with the law. When Congress passed that law, it's a, it makes sense. It's important for when someone is advocating on behalf of a right. foreign government. I get it. We, then we they agree. Should, right. And I hope and, you And I think you're... I hope you're wrong that there are lots of people that are breaking the law, but if they are breaking we know law, the law, they group should be broke. held accountable. But we know the Podesta group didn't register in its representation of the Ukrainians. That law it says so applies in the indictment. to everyone who lobbies, right. but it advocates. doesn't apply to you. And that's what I don't no, understand. No, no, because How members of Congress don't exactly? lobby or advocate no, on behalf of foreign governments. Lobbied. You're the reason they're spending this money. Oh, that's right. And anyone who you. lobbies a member of Congress is required to disclose that they're but working why for... shouldn't you disclose it? Why shouldn't I be able to call your office and get a straight answer? Well, no, no. I mean, you, I mean we, you can call my office and say, who did I meet with in the last but eight why years? why not disclose it? I mean, because well, they're, what, what they're doing no is foreign governments are spending money to influence Tucker, there's you. Not, no one's making a secret of it. What I'm saying to you yes, is... Yes, no, that's not so, true. No, that that's not true. true. We, no one keeps a record of it because people come into your Lobbyists office. Lobbyists have to keep records. That's why right. They why should. shouldn't you have to keep a no, record? No, I don't have any objection to that. I mean, we don't do it as a matter of practice to keep well, a record of it. Because you don't want... To, of course, you don't want to be held accountable. No, no, no it's not a question of mental I'm happy to have you be held accountable. I'm a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. People come to meet with me who are heads of state, that are ambassadors, that people who are advocating on behalf of a foreign government. I meet with them. They make their case. But and why shouldn't I be allowed I'm, to know that? No, absolutely. No, I, have I have no to, objection no, to you knowing that. I have to but rely. don't say that anyone's trying to keep any secret. Well, of course you are, or no. else you would make you would mandate it. No, no, of course. No, it's not mandated. What I I'm know saying? it's not, and that's why most people don't admit that, that they meet with. No, no, I think most members of the Foreign Affairs well, Committee admit that they real. meet. Then why not just, it's really simple, I don't pass a any... law, just pass a law tomorrow. And you should advocate for it and say, members of Congress who meet with foreign agents ought to keep a list, and they ought to reveal that list to the public. I think that's a terrific idea. Good. I think that's a terrific idea. Did you ever meet with anyone from the Podesta Group? Uh, I haven't met, I don't think I've ever met Mr. Podesta. No, from the group. Lobbying yeah, I'm sure they On are behalf of foreign that, clients, yeah. I, I don't know that I've met with anyone who, uh, who lobbied on behalf of a foreign government. Why would they come to see you? But they have other otherwise. clients that are not foreign government. So you, you never met with a foreign client represented by the Podesta group? Not that I remember. Okay. I, I wish we had a registry so we could check this. Yeah, I mean, we don't, I don't keep <laughs> track of everyone I've met with in eight maybe, years. Maybe we'll get one. All Congressman, right. thank you for coming on. My pleasure. And representing such a great state.